How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday at Home Repairs and today I want to show you how to install vanity lights. Along the way I'll also point out some of the issues so you know how not to install vanity lights because these are some very common issues that I run across in my area. Now each of our situations is a little different so you'll see down in the timeline if you hover your cursor at the bottom of the video you'll see the timeline broken up into what are called chapters. Hover over that, you'll see what each chapter talks about, and then you can get the information that specifically pertains to your job. I will touch on many different varieties of electrical boxes, but also those varieties of vanity lights, which you need to take into account because not every vanity light is gonna fit your scenario. So first up, I'll give you a little bit of an overview of the project I'm working on, and then we'll jump right into installing two different vanity lights. So let's take a look at this setup and also let you know how did I position the box which will then mount my vanity light. How did I determine the horizontal position but also the vertical? So what I have for this setup is a 60 inch bathroom vanity with two different sinks. I'm gonna have two different mirrors here and then corresponding two different vanity lights. I'll show you the mirror here. It's a Delta Custom Reflection Series. I did a different video on this type of mirror. I think it's great for DIYers. It's a little pricey. You can get cheaper mirrors, but it gives you some side to side flexibility that you can move side to side if you're a little bit off in your measurements and it's just easy to hang. It's pretty forgiving as a DIY project. So you'll see a link down in the description of that type of mirror and also a video of me doing the full install. So this is the mirror I'm going with for me. Height off my backsplash is 38 inches. So I knew my mirror would go 38 inches off the backsplash. I had selected my vanity light, which is from Lowe's. It's just a cheap project source vanity light from Lowe's. So I installed one of the shades to get the measurement from the center point to the bottom of the shade, which here it's about four inches. And why I do that is I really don't want my shade hanging down below my mirror. I like to have it right at that edge or a little bit higher. So I just wanted to get that measurement. So now with the mirror removed, Measuring from backsplash, I position the center point at 42 and a half for my box that will mount the vanity light. And then horizontally from the wall, I just reference my faucet and then just center that up on the faucet. Now the other thing you want to take into account, if you're going really close to your ceiling, make sure you have clearance. I have about 12 inches of clearance, which is plenty for the vanity light that I chose. But just be careful for the scenario where you might mount your electrical box high and then you picked out a vanity light that needs quite a bit of clearance. You don't want it interfering with your ceiling and then making your job much longer. So now you know where you want to put your box. You know where you want to mount your vanity light. Now the challenge is where are the studs in your wall corresponding to where you want that box to go? I would say this is probably the trickiest part of the project but there are a bunch of different options for electrical boxes because there's so many different scenarios. So let me show you a couple of those and hopefully one will work exactly for your project and then I'll show you which one I'm gonna go with. So one of the most common ways to not install a vanity light and issues that don't meet code is a scenario such as this. You have a very cheap vanity light that has these mounting plates and because you have the mounting plates, you can kind of just screw it into the drywall, drywall anchors, or, or maybe actually hit a stud to mount it. And then your Romex just comes out and into the small plate area between your outside trim piece and your plate. Now that's not correct. And this would increase the likelihood of this Romex or this non-metallic sheathing and the insulation around the wires to get damaged and possibly cause an issue like a short later on. So don't do that, and if you have that at your house, it might be something you wanna fix sooner rather than later. So knowing that we need some form of box, because all of our scenarios are different, and I have kind of two different scenarios here that I'll show you, you need to look at your different options. Everything I'm talking about here is what's called old work because we already have our drywall up or maybe you already have plaster in place, so we are installing our boxes later on. 
The first and most classic would be an old work ceiling box like this. It has these tabs that are connected to screws there. And these tabs go on the back side of the drywall when you insert it in. And that is what hooks the drywall as you tighten the screw. And it'll actually mount that box securely to the drywall or plaster. Now, if you have plaster, remember, check the clearances between your out, outer flange and your tab here because sometimes you don't have enough clearance for the thickness of your wall. Half inch drywall, that's usually not a problem. So that's your first option if you're dealing with a wall cavity and you have no interaction with your studs. Just to point out, they also make some pretty interesting ones like this one where you wouldn't need a hole saw or a jab saw. It has the saw built into it where you actually use a drill and a nut driver and use this box to drill its own hole and then you can take this off to make sure you have the right clearance. So just know those are out there and in the description, like everything else we talk about, you'll see links for these products. Now the one I am going with over here and I'll show you how to install, and that is an old work box, but it's actually rigidly secured to a stud. So that's the big difference. Usually new work boxes, when you just have your framing up, you can sink your nails into the studs and hold your boxes. Those are new work boxes. Old work boxes classically were attached to your wall surface. Well, in this case, you cut out your box and then you're actually able to drive two screws from inside the box to securely hold it against the stud. So if that is an option, which it is on this side, that is a cool one to go with. And it's a very secure hold that can hold 50 pounds. And then you have a pancake box. It is only half of an inch thick and it would be where you have interference with a stud and you actually need to mount this to the stud with screws and the thickness can only be the thickness of let's say half inch drywall. This is a very convenient option and it will be the option I'm going with with, with this side because I do have interference with a stud that I need to account for. Just keep in mind, because this is such a small box, small space in there, you need to be careful with how many connectors you're putting in this box. And it's really only certified with a box fill factor where you just have your Romex coming in and you're connecting to a light fixture. It would not be ideal for this side where I have power coming in and then I'm gonna link that to the other light so I'm gonna have multiple other connections and wires coming in and I would go over the fill factor for such a small pancake box like this. So this might be a great scenario, especially if you're having interactions with a two x four. So just remember you want to encapsulate those connections within an electrical box so it's safe and meeting code. And do not just pull Romex and put your connections within the void between like your outside trim piece and your mounting bracket. That would not be ideal. So first up, I'll show you how to install the smart box from Southwire on this side, and then we'll go to an example with the pancake box. So what I'm gonna do here, just to make sure I know where the edge of that two x four is, I'm gonna use a Phillips screwdriver, poke it through that hole, mark with my finger how far in the two x four is, so then I can mark it on the outside of the drywall. This is so critical for the smart box because it mounts against that two x four on the one side. Once I have that horizontal distance, then I'll just transfer my 42 and a half, which is the center of my box. And now I have my reference point where I can put the box against the wall and I can outline the box to know the size of hole that I need to cut with my jab saw. Now you have a few different tools. You can use an oscillating tool, hole saw if it's a regular old work box. But because this one has that flat side and I want to be careful to find the two x four, I'm just going to use a jab saw, which is an inexpensive tool and I think pretty forgiving for DIYers. Just be careful, you have Romex in the wall, so make sure you're not damaging that Romex as you cut away the drywall with the jab saw. So with your hole cut, now you can take a look at the back of the smart box and you'll see there are different holes for 12 gauge versus 14. So just reference that and then break off the tabs within your corresponding hole. Since I'm going 12 gauge, I'll be running it through this hole and that hole. So take your time with 12 gauge like this, it might be a little bit harder to work with than 14 gauge, but make sure you have plenty of wire extending out of your box 
and that the box can fit flush versus the drywall surface. Then you'll just use your impact driver and a Phillips head to sink those screws in. And you might need, instead of a standard bit like I was using, you might need to get an extension which will help you sink those screws all the way down and secure it to the stud. So earlier I told you I was gonna use a pancake box on this side, which I thought would line me up with the faucet, but actually I have just enough clearance to use a standard old work box, and that will get my vanity light centered up with my faucet. So I'll remove this plate, which was just for demo purposes, and get that box in there so we can get both our vanity lights mounted and installed. Similar process to the smart box, I mark the vertical and the horizontal to get my center point. Now this is actually the center point of this old work box. Then I'll outline what I need to cut out and I'll use my jab saw to get the initial cut completed. This doesn't have to be perfect the first time and I'm usually a little conservative cutting small because with an old work box, you do not want the hole to be too large or the flange will fall through your hole and it will not work. So I'll feed the wire through and see where my interferences are at and then I'll double back with the jab saw and I'll just trim things up. Then with a little adjustment, I can pop that into place. Then all you have to do is tighten up those tabs on the back side of the drywall so that the tabs will securely hold the box in place and then you're done. So now I have both my electrical boxes installed and it really it's kind of the home stretch now. If you had an existing vanity light, you're probably starting off at this point. But do keep in mind if you haven't selected your vanity light yet, just look at your wall. You might have old paint and then new paint where people painted around the base of that vanity light. When you go select your new vanity light, usually it's a lot easier project if the base is larger. So if it can cover up those imperfections, whether in your drywall imperfections or your multiple paint colors, if you go with a larger base, that's gonna make it a whole lot easier. Way too often people just go out and see something that they really like, they grab it, they go home, try to put it up and crap. Now you gotta do drywall repair or paint and it just makes it a lot longer project. So keep that in mind if you're replacing an old vanity light with a new vanity light. So to get things mounted up, you're either gonna be dealing with a base plate like this, usually found on those cheaper models, or on something that has a smaller base or a little nicer model, usually you have your classic mounting bracket. The mounting bracket will have your slots that will actually mount to your electrical box, and then it has a portion that rotates 180 degrees and then that's going to have your two mounting bolts which are going to attach to the vanity light and give you some versatility on getting your vanity light level. Just one thing to keep in mind, make sure that you know where things are adjusted when you put it up because you just want to make sure that you have the ability to rotate in the direction you want to make things level. You can get everything tightened up to your box and then realize you have to get things flipped around to get it where you want it. So I'm gonna install both of these and then we'll talk about wiring. So wiring is pretty straightforward. This is the simpler one. It just has the one neutral coming in, the one hot, obviously I have all the power off. And then we have a ground coming from our bracket. All I do is I just use these pre-made pigtails that I always have with me with a grounding screw. So I just easily installed that on the bracket and then we have our ground coming from our Romex. Then for the light, not much more complex, and I've already installed my lever nuts, my Wago 221 lever nuts. If you've seen my videos, you know I'm a huge fan. They are super handy for lights and fans because you can pre-install them. You pull the levers up for the wires that will be coming from your box, and it just makes it a much easier job. If you've never seen these, you can look in the description. You'll see a link to our Amazon store, and I have a few different kits which are really good starter kits if you wanna try out the Wago lever nuts. All right, let's get this one wired up 
and we'll look at the last example, at, which has two sets of Romex coming in. So again, the Wagos make this pretty quick work and is much better than trying to fight wire nuts, especially if you're not that comfortable with wire nuts. Now I will go ahead and tuck the hot neutral and grounds back into the box so our connectors are contained within our electrical box and then I will line the light and see that those mounting bolts are a bit too long. Now since the orientation of the bracket is not ideal like the next one I'll show you, I'm actually gonna use my bolt cutters on my wire strippers to cut those to length and then when I put the mounting nuts on here, they do not bottom out and I'm able to tighten the light and level it up. So for the second example, because we have two sets of Romex coming in, that means we're going to have four ground wires. So I use a five wire Wago 221 lever nut and then I tuck that back into the box prior to moving on to the neutral side, which is now a three pin Wago. And you'll see the mounting bracket on this one is actually a more ideal setup. So that is the slots are oriented in the vertical position. That's gonna to mount to your box. And then you're able to put the mounting side for the light horizontal. It gives you better flexibility when you're trying to level things up. And it also allows you to adjust these mounting bolts without actually having to cut those with your wire strippers. So if you have the choice, you should do this. And if you're installing old word boxes like I did, just rotate that so your mounting holes are like this setup is. And then I'll tighten the two screws in the middle and that'll keep things snug. And then we'll go to mount the light and put on the final mounting nuts. And then this light is now in place. So as you're putting the final touches, you're leveling everything up, you're screwing your shades into place, just take your time. You don't wanna drop one of those shades and break it and have to go back to the store. Everything's hooked up here. We'll test it out and it's looking good. Overall, I'm happy with the height. I'm happy with the way the mirrors look and everything lines up. But let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comments. Also, below the video, you'll see those links to our Amazon store. If you want to check out those Wago lever nuts, the wire strippers I use, you can go on the store. It's always updated, and it's my recommendation to DIYers for the various tools you need across your different projects. And also, with no extra cost to you, it actually helps the channel out. So I really do appreciate you guys going over there and supporting the channel. Now, if those Delta mirrors caught your eye, you can check out this video right here. I'll walk you through the full install and it'll give you a little bit more information on all the different configurations you can get with this series from Delta. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.